Hello everybody and welcome to part four of our Japanese landing craft or hovercraft 172 scale by trumpeter. And first thing I wanted to say is uh, how popular this uh, video series is, is being. The first video I put up, it would be three weeks ago by the time this one goes up, uh, the views on that video in the first 24 hours pretty much doubled uh, almost any other video I put up. So this is proving to be quite popular. Um, also, um, I think it's about 45% of those viewers are people who are not subscribed. So that's good. That means uh, YouTube is happy with my video and they're putting it out to people, to new people. So um, next thing I want is for all those people to subscribe. <laughs> uh, that's quite a lot of unsubscribed people. Um, of course, people are subscribing and that's good. And uh, I'd like to keep that up. But um, new to this uh, series and you're just watching this, uh, go back to the beginning of the playlist where you can watch the unboxing of our hovercraft and, um, and see it from part one as we go through the whole build. Um, and subscribe and hit the notifications um, bell so you get notified each time one of these is released, which is weekly at the moment. All right. So, um, and also comments are always welcome. Always welcome comments down the bottom. So anyway, let's get on with this and where we're up to. So the instructions, we are at step 14. And this is a another bit of the superstructure. And this is the last main um, piece at the rear before we get to the big fan, fan on the back, the two fans. Um, so what I did, having a look at the way this goes together, um, I was concerned that there's a hole in this end here that I thought, uh, if you could see through that, because inside there's no detail at all. That's quite bland. There's nothing there. Um, but what I did was I test fitted everything and put the top down on top and and put this on and had a look and realized that it's pitch black in there. You can't see anything anyway. So I'm just going to uh, uncoat it all as usual, but I won't bother painting on the inside of there like I was going to, which also means that I'll be able to put all this together um, before I paint anything. And uh, as usual, what I'm doing, and I find this works best for me, is I leave the, there's some photo etch that goes on here. Um, so we'll have a look at it. Um, so this part here, I haven't got the photo etch off the frets yet, but two pieces of photo etch go on there. And what I've been doing is doing painting the whole thing, like doing the primer coat and then putting the base coat um, aluminium on. And then I put the photo etch on and then lightly spray them with the aluminium. And... And that works out really well because that way I only do it very, very lightly and I don't block up any of the little holes because the last thing I want to do with photo etch is the mesh is here like this. You don't want to have it so thick that you're blocking the mesh. You want to have it nice and neat and it is working out that well, well like that. All right. And also I do have some, um, it's a, primer undercoat for photo etch that's clear and I haven't really used it for a long time because I found that it's quite awkward particularly on small pieces to actually see if you haven't missed any parts because the primer is clear but in this case with just square pieces like that well it's not a problem so um, priming putting a bit of primer of this photo etch actually I'll grab it and I'll just show you which what it is be back in a sec okay I'm back so um, yeah, somebody asked in the comments about um, do I um, prime my photo etch and put an undercoat over the photo etch, and I do sometimes. And if I do, this is what I'm using. This is a SMS etch primer, and it's a pretty much clear primer, and straight you don't thin it or anything, straight out of the bottle. 
and give that a coat. And I'm guessing it just gives that extra little layer of some uh, for the paint to stick to. Um, the only problem with being clear primer is if you do scratch your paint work, well, there's not another layer of paint under there to hide that scratch and you're going to go straight through and the metal's going to show through, um, which is why normally I, I prime with a grey primer on Photo Etch. Anyway, that's, that's what I use, SMS um, Etch Primer. All right, so now with these, so these pieces are going to go together quite easily. Um, we've just got the four sides to put on. That's no problem. There's a panel for the roof, which is this one. And that'll go on top. Yeah, that's better. And then we've got some little uh, attachments there. There's a ladder to go on there. Um, there's another little platform with something on it there. A little vents on the top. Um, looks like some more little aerials and bits and pieces. I don't know what they are. I'm guessing they're sort of... I don't know. I really have no idea what they are. We'll have to have a look at the video of the actual hovercraft and try and figure it out. Um, probably like vents of some sort, because I can imagine this equipment... This is all engines in here that turn, turn the prop blades, so it's going to all get pretty hot in there. So it's probably a lot of exhaust vents and so forth. So we'll, I'll get on to this, and um, and then we'll move on to step 15, which is actually setting up one of these prop fans on the rear, which I'm looking forward to. And then 16, we start doing everything we've done again, but on the other side of the hovercraft. We can work all the superstructures down the other side, which will include the cockpit where we've got to put a light. So, all right. So I will uh, get back into this. And also one other thing I've just thought about too, is I mentioned it in the previous part three, was doing a clear coat of the um, hovercraft deck. And I mentioned it was because I had decals to go on, which is true. But also this is going to require a lot of weathering. So uh, panel line wash, um, there's going to be, uh, watermark stains, probably salt stains from water. Um, yeah, this this thing's going to be a mess. <laughs> so I need that layer of um, clear coat over that too. So I'll be have, we'll have a look at that. We'll we'll bring that over and um, do a before and after shot of the clear coat and see how that comes up. And of course, all these subsections of the superstructure. Um, we'll all get uh, clear coated as well before they go on and probably I would say a lot of it I will do a lot of weathering uh, panel line wash and doing all the stains and marks uh, before I put it on the hovercraft it's probably easy to do each section uh, work on it separately all right um, back back shortly with this bit done <laughs> okay Hello, welcome back. So I just wanted to show you something here where they've made a mistake. Um, where I'm building this piece of uh, superstructure here, the photo etch that they're calling for, they've got PE15, there's two pieces. See them, see them there, two rectangular shaped pieces, which is what they should be, because they go there and there. When you go to piece number 15 on the actual photo etch, there they are there. So they're saying that those are the two pieces, which is wrong. <laughs> so I had to check through, and they actually mean number four. So there's four of them because there'll be this one and there'll be one on the other side. But it's actually number four, piece number four. So if you're doing this, uh, you'll see that that fits, not number 15. 15 is one of the final steps towards the end of the build where those pieces do actually go but yeah so that's the one so i'm about to take those off there now i've just glued all this together and um put that little piece on there and i'll get the photo off, etch off ready there's a few little pieces to go up on top um that i'll put up there and then i'll go and give this a coat and a primer 
and then when the primer is dry um, we'll put the photo etch on and uh, well actually I'll spray the base coat with the silver, the aluminium that we're doing it all and then put the photo etch on there and give it a light spray so as not to block up any of the mesh all right back shortly all right hello I'm back and while those pieces are drying where I did the undercoat for that um, superstructure piece I went back and looked at one of my containers and step 11 um, had all the pieces in there but they weren't uh, put together so here it is so this is the superstructure in step 11 now yeah I know there's a, a couple of clamps on there <laughs> that's because there's quite a lot to this so not only do we have the two center pieces that are glued in there but these ends are glued as well as and then on top of that there's a piece as well so it's all square it's all sitting flush but i just wanted to make sure that these ends are really clamped down tight and properly and i didn't want to use ca glue because i needed to just maneuver it around so that it was exactly right if i use ca glue and was to put that piece on there for example it would have stuck instantly and i would i'd be screwed <laughs> um, so using just the normal contactor um, it'll take a bit longer to dry of course but that's why it's clamped so once all that's on there and this piece is the one that has that vent that sits on the top um, that rotates so just grab that see what i mean so this which i think looks really cool uh, will sit on top of this structure here and there's also uh we've got for this uh some mesh photo inch mesh to go on the windows or on the sides here as well now i'm just now looking and i'm seeing there's only two pieces of mesh and yet we've got two sides to do but it looks like by the instructions that uh maybe one side is actually left open in fact uh pretty sure it is so one side won't have any mesh i'm i will double check that uh, if that's the case you'll be able to see in there which is good because that's why i painted the inside of this slightly darker gray and i want to do some weathering in there just so just because of the fact that you'll be able to see in that uh, even if there was mesh on on there uh, with the photo edge you'd still be able to see in there a little bit so anyway i'm going to leave that probably give it an hour should be all it needs and then uh, and then move on to getting the um, photo edge for it and the other piece that's in there with the um, primer on it now should just about be dry now to, for me to put the aluminium coat over the top and we'll be able to bring that out and have a look at that too okay back shortly okay hello welcome back so we um well not we i have a bit of a dilemma i've glued on a piece upside down unfortunately so in step 11 here we have these two pieces here and they join together and this little box piece you can see there is at the bottom as these join together and then these go in the center we did all that put those on the end everything except put this piece on the top unfortunately i've glued this section upside down so it needs to be turned around the other way that should be on the bottom that mesh should be at the top now I can't leave it that way because it won't fit not only will it not fit on the deck of our hovercraft but it's just not going to match the other side I mean it's going to be really quite obvious so I didn't know what to do how am I going to pull these pieces apart see there's 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 two pieces here there's this piece stuck on here because as you can see from the shape of this see it joins onto the, this half of here so there's this bit so 
the pieces I put on here, these have to come off. All right? These center pieces have to come off to be able to remove this, turn it upside down and put it back. Now, I used my Loctite CA glue to glue those center pieces on there because I wanted it to glue instantly when I was putting it on. And I think I also glued the center, these two the joins on the ends with CA glue. Now the inside of this I did with Ravel's contactor. Now after posting on uh, YouTube to get some help on how I'm going to separate this and also on Facebook one of the um, scale model kit channels I got tons and tons of well good advice and probably not so good advice everything from just wiggle it until it comes apart to twisting it to yeah things that won't work and then it was my mate at Aussie scale modeler Jace who suggested acetone so after checking we figured acetone will get that off and quite a few people suggested that as well so today i went out and bought acetone i went to a local chemist i was actually after nail polish remover apparently that's acetone and a lot of parrot um nail polish removers have deliberately don't put acetone in it for some reason but anyway they had this it was only about twelve dollars so it's good to have around hopefully this won't happen again and i won't need it but in case i do there it is so now i'm going to try and put a bit of this stuff on here and hope it loosens up our ca glue and i can get this thing apart clean it all up turn our piece around and get it looking as it should and fitting as it should all right, so let's do this live. I'm not going to say, right, back in a second, and we have a look at the result. Um, I'm going to do this, and we're going to get this happening on camera, which hopefully it will work. <laughs> All right, I will come back shortly as I get my paintbrushes and bits and pieces that I'll need to have as we apply this stuff. Back shortly. Okay, so the first thing I noticed is be careful when you take this lid off. It's one of those childproof ones that you've got to press down to unscrew. And as I did, a little bit spilled out onto my cutting mat here. And straight away, it's taken off the grid marks on my cutting, cutting mat. Literally, just they're gone. <laughs> you know, come down and have a look at that. Look at that. That's where I spilt it. Just... Yeah, so this is obviously going to take the paint off too by the looks of things. It doesn't smell too bad. It doesn't smell too strong, which is good. I thought, because I live in a, an apartment here, and I thought it's going to stick out the whole place, but, you know, but it's not. So I guess nail polish remover is probably a lot stronger smell than just straight acetone, which is good. So, all right, I'm back again. I'll, I'll be back again. I'm just going to go get some paper towels. In case we have another little spill and uh, we'll get set up okay so what I'm going to do first I got a bit of a, a brush here and I want to just brush a little bit in here just so we can see if I can dislodge this center piece here uh, as a test and if that works we'll put a bit on the other side so let's do this a little bit on the brush just gonna brush it in there I don't know how much of this I should be using but it's going in there let's see if we got anything happening oh Yeah. 
Now it's definitely CA glue that I used on this section. I'm really putting it on, although I'm starting to see something go into the bottle there. I don't know if that's paint or ah we sorry. we've got I felt something move. I think it's loosening up. Yep, look at that. Sorry if I took that off camera. See that's moving now. And get the other side. What I might do too is some of the glue is dripping back into here, which I don't want. So I'm going to tip some of this into another container. But it's definitely come off. Half of it's come off, which is great. knife in there just don't want anything to break where it should more There we go. It's off. Okay. That's a relief. I'm happy. So I know this is going to work. Definitely takes the paint off. But... Alright, that one's off. Now I'm going to work on the other side. But first I'm just going to go... I'll be back in a second while I've moved this in. I guess it'll be in okay in a plastic bottle yeah i'm gonna put this in something else back in a second okay so i've moved this into a spare empty paint tell me a paint pot and uh i'm gonna put some down the other side now hopefully this will come off just as easily It seems to just need a little bit. I'm sorry I keep moving off camera. Let me just bring this over a bit. It's better. A little bit down the inside of here. It's good. Click. Uh, I think you would have heard that. So that, and that came off. All right, more in there. There we go, that's off. Good. So that's those two bits done, which is good. Now the hard part I'm thinking is going to be these. Um, I need to take this off. And the problem in there is that's not CA glue. It's it's my contactor. So let's see if it works for that. We can put this in here. I definitely need to use my knife to work it apart which I think it is doing that that's good so I'll do the other side Okay. 
Okay, that's good. It's just going to have to slowly work it down, let it go down inside the cracks there. So I open it up. I know that the join in there is actually a CA glue, so I'm confident that'll come apart. Yeah. Now, I've just noticed that's Started to crack across there, which is not good. Yeah, that's not good. See there. Try it this side. Don't know whether it actually weakens the plastic. Maybe, maybe it's weakening up, weakening the plastic. Some in there too. Oh yeah. That's gonna come off. That's good. That's already come apart there, you can see that in the center there. That's great. This one here, just need to work that down. Being a bit gentle. Yeah. I don't know how I managed to do this, make this mistake. But anyway, not paying attention. Part there now, see that's both sides done. I'm just going to keep it uh, going through. Well, I'm glad it's also working on the contactor as well. down the edge of there as well. Run it down there. Certainly not worrying about how much I'm using. Because at this point, all I want to do is remove this whole piece. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Slowly just wedging it up. in the process. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. That sounded good. Yeah. It's going right through inside the back of there now. I think. Any second now. Might have this off. Just tricky down there. Slowly coming up. down there. This side is that opened up then. Just heard that it's through. There we go. <laughs> Sorry I moved off camera again but there we go. That's come apart now. Just gonna brush a bit more in there. And that's off there. Alright. Well that's good. So now so you don't have to watch it all. I'm gonna take this side off the same and we'll come back and have a look. Okay, back in a sec. Alright, so I just thought I'd bring it back and show you the as this releases, there we go. Come off there, off there, and there we go. Look at that. So now I just need to turn that around and put it back the right way around. <laughs> all right, well, obviously, I'm going to have to do a bit of cleanup and uh, I'll tidy all this up. And uh, it's just all like, as far as I can tell, there's no damage to the plastic at all. It's just all the glue there. So that's that'll be easy. I'll just clean that up and um, probably use the acetone will actually help me in cleaning it up. And then uh, put it back on there. And it may be that I may not even have to repaint anything. Oh, there'll be a bit there. Yeah, I'll have to repaint some spots there. But uh, Fantastic. All right, so again, thank you for everybody who uh, suggested uh, to use some acetone and uh, good stuff. Yeah, like I say, oh, I'm all new to this. So I've never had to remove a piece that I've already glued before. So that's not bad, have you? I've never made this mistake yet with what I've been doing in the last year and three quarters or whatever it is. All right, I will finish this up and this time we'll come back and have a look at it uh, fixed and as it should be. Cheers all. Back soon. Okay, welcome back. So, as you can see, most of the glue, I've well, all the glue I've removed and I've just checked the fit I put it all back together and it's looking pretty good so what I'm going to do now and I've also test fitted on the deck and it, it slips straight into, into the spot perfectly so what I'm going to do now 
is make sure it's up the right way. I'll put some clamps on here and on here and um, throw some more glue in there and glue these on. And then we'll just give it another little fresh coat of our aluminium and we're all good. Everything's back together and we can get on with things. All right, back shortly. Okay, so uh, I've given it some paint and uh, it's as good as new. Looking perfect. Now, one other thing I did have to do was I had to take these two center pieces out again, unfortunately, because when I test fitted it, it wasn't fitting. And when I, then I realized that there's two little sort of, I don't know if you can see, but little, um, you know, lips that they sit against. Well, I thought they sat against when they actually sit up on the top of um, to be in the right position, which meant they were, it was not fitting down here because the gap was too, too narrow. So I moved them in closer as they're supposed to be and it fits on the deck absolutely perfectly now. Now, so with the instructions, they were not very clear. Um, so be careful if you're in step 11 these two pieces here, the arrows just point to where those ends go and go behind here to where these ends go. And you'll see there's two little things that you might think, oh, they'll just sit against there and they'd be fine, but they don't. They sit on top of there. So it may only be a difference of two millimeters, but it makes a big difference for when you're trying to fit it. Um, so just also be aware of that. Um, you know, I've come to realize in this kit that you really need to quadruple check everything you're doing <laughs> to make sure uh, you don't make mistakes. Although putting that piece on upside down was, well, there's no excuse for that. But anyway, so step 11 here is now done, although I haven't put that on the top yet. So that I'll be placing on the top of here. And I have a Yes, that piece is all ready to go on there too. So I will do that. And then we can move on to where we've already done this piece, which I'm sure I've shown you. That one, which is all the other way. Um, yeah, so that one's all completely done. So. And also test fitted and there's no pieces upside down. So we're doing well. <laughs> the next step is the actual um, fan, one of the fans on the back in step 15. So I will finish off this piece and put our piece on the top with that exhaust fan on the top of it. And then we'll start on the fan. So, yep, getting there. Okay, we'll be back in a sec. Oh, and just one more thing. Uh, the reason I hadn't put the top on here, which is that piece going on like that, is because I want to do some weathering inside here because you can actually see through here. And the grill, well, you can slightly see through the grill, um, but most of that I'll be doing like the darkening of the grill with some panel wash and stuff. But yeah, I left the top off so I could get in here and just dirty up the walls a bit and put a bit of a, put some stains and marks on the inside. That's why I haven't. So yeah, I mean, I could access it from the bottom, but while it's open like this, it'd be easier. All right, back shortly. Okay, so moving on to step 15, which is, as I mentioned, the um, bands on the back. It's actually saying to make two of these. And the reason I say that is it's unusual that they didn't ask us to make two of those in step 14. Because uh, later on, we do have to make another one in step 21. Exactly the same. Uh, and also, the one that we, uh, well, I say we, I, I messed up the piece upside down. Um, 
there was only one to make yet later on, uh, we do have to build exactly the same again. Hopefully, with no mistakes this time. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I would have thought making two of the things as you go would have made sense, but anyway, but we will be making two of these. And then we'll be doing the other side of this, which is a little bit, which is different to the one we've already made because this is the cockpit where we've got to put in the seats and everything. But anyway, for the moment, step 15 is this. Now, there's, they're on two sprues here. The only sprues we need are uh, sprue E and a couple of pieces off sprue D. So the first thing I'll do now will be to uh, clip off all the pieces, put them all over to the side, and then uh, work out um, how we're going to put these. Well, we know how we're going to put them together, but I need to think about the painting because they're not. It's not all aluminium. There's um, there's some grey, I think, and uh, some other colours. I think we also have the orange. We'll just have a quick look at the colour plan here. So yeah, there's some yellow. There's some yellow on the blades. That need to be painted and we've got some of the darker this is the darker gray which looks like 12 plus 56 12 plus 56 it's going to be that dark gray we'll figure that out i'm pretty sure the top of the shroud you'd call it i guess around there would be the same color as that the exhaust on the top here just trying to find where the markings are showing the color of that exhaust there it is 12 and 56 there it, it is so there we go so the top of the one end one top part of this shroud I'm thinking that's probably it there will be the same color as I did that which is fine. Anyway, I'll uh, nip all these pieces off, tidy them all up, and uh, we'll come back and move on a bit more. Back shortly. Okay, welcome back. So, uh, I've got all my pieces here. They're all being cleaned up, um, sanded, all little pieces done neat, glued this together as the main shaft that goes through, tidy up neat. Um, these ones I'm going to go and paint now with some uh, primer. Now I can't put it all much of this pe these pieces together and then paint them because these these two halves here attach, but you need to put these in at the same time. Otherwise, they're not going to sit in their little spots there. So, and the top half of this, this one here needs to be done the darker grey whereas the rest will be the aluminium um, this will paint this up separate I can't put the prop uh, inside of it because it needs to be yellow or not yellow orange there's an orange color for that um, so that has to be separate and this of course oh there's also actually a black strip underneath this so just on the edge of these blades, there's going to be a black line, which I'll mask up and do that um, after I've painted them yellow. So that'll be a nice little bit of detail. This is all silver, so I'll be able to spray that. But for the moment, a whole lot um, in undercoat. And I'll do the same with those as well. Let them dry. And then uh, we'll come back and have a look at it and see about... Um, Probably doing the yellow, the orange. I keep saying yellow. There's an orange on these blades here. Get that done, and then the rest will be able to be done in the aluminium. All right. So I will do this. Be back in a second. Okay. Welcome back. So I've got all these parts painted up. The reason I didn't do all of them was because I've run out of these uh, clips. 
I didn't have enough to hold all of them. I need to get another packet. But anyway, so they all come up really nice. I've got the main shaft that connects it from the superstructure to turn the fans. It runs in through the housing. I've done that in a metal black. Um, the rest is all the, the aluminium colour it's supposed to be. This one here has got the darker grey on the top. And that's part of the fan shroud. So that's going to sit on there. You can see the difference. The inside of it is also silver. And then, of course, the orange on the fans themselves come up really nice. Uh, <laughs> the, the camera is not showing the true colour. They look yellow on the camera, but trust me, they're orange. <laughs> I've yet to do a little black stripe. These are still not dry, but when they are, I'll tape them up and I'll do a little black stripe that's supposed to be running down the side of them. I checked, there are no decals for it, so I will be painting that on. And I also clear coated the main hovercraft deck. It's outside of a nice clear coat because I, it needs a lot of decals that will be easier to put on before I put any parts on the deck. Some little bits will be a bit tricky to get to. So that will take, I'll leave that the whole day to dry. I gave that a nice big coat of clear. I'll whack a quick picture up and have a look and see it out there drying. Okay, now I'm going to um, take these all off my little clips so I can put my other parts on clips and do exactly the same thing, paint them up. Now I've, I'm starting to run a bit low on the aluminium silver colour so I'm going to whip up to my number one hobby shop uh, RC crew at the moment just up in the next suburb and um, I know they've got some in stock I'll pick that up and while I'm there as usual I'll buy something else yeah I need a few more paints and uh, yeah I won't go too crazy but anyway I'll be back again and we'll take a look at some more progress cheers back shortly Okay, I'm back. Um, went to the model shop, picked up my paint, got what I needed. There's some more um, flat aluminium, which I was running out of. Uh, while I was there, and I didn't spend much, and I didn't buy anything I don't really need, I bought this one. It's called Mr. Metal Color, and it's a chrome silver. Looks quite nice, eh? Um, I don't need it on this build. Maybe the next one. We'll see. Um, this one here is a, a metal black. I like this metal black. I was getting low on that. And here we've got X10, which is a dark metal. A uh, gun metal, sorry. Gun metal is always handy to have as well. Now just to top up on my paint uh, stock. And uh, all good to go. So um, these are all dried now. I've been gone for about an hour and a half. So what I'll do now is I'll... Oh, yes, I can take all my little alligator clips, what we call them, and get all these ones um, sprayed up as well. All right, I'm going to do that, and I will be back. Hello, welcome back. So let's have a look. I've uh, glued all this together, only just, not long ago, and it's come up looking pretty nice, as you can see. So we've got the shaft going down into the back. There's our yellow propeller in there, or well, orange. It is orange. <laughs> uh, I had me staying yellow because I'm looking at the monitor, watching what I'm doing. So... There it is. So that's how that's going to be. Now these here, they just swivel. So once, they're very, very loose fitting. So, I mean, once it's in the display where it's going to be, I'll just position them out. But at the moment, they're just flopping back. Um, one thing that's a bit tricky is lining up these little notch, notches that sit inside. There's a, under the base on the bottom of it, so this is the underside, there's a notch in there that this one sits in. 
and you have to make sure you've got the right one because the one on either side here and here only have half a piece in there so if you look at these ones for example see the shape they are on both sides whereas this it's only on one side and that allows it to fit up beside this strut that it stands on now if you don't get this one lined up there with these two half ones on these sides then it won't slide up they won't fit in there and you'll have difficulties trying to get that to sit straight all right so you'll see what i mean if you get it. this is on step 15. now once those are lined up everything else will be fine and another thing too is with this um there's two little notches inside there as well where the blades sit one there and there's one i can get on the other side there's one in there as well two of the blades will sit in there which and then you can glue that into place so yeah, a little bit tricky but in the end it, it came up looking really nice now the other pieces i've undercoated and they're probably almost dry now so what i'll do is i'll go and um, do the darker gray on that on the second one inside and then i'll do all the aluminium the rest of it needs to be um, i already when i painted these uh, did the this prop in the orange and the and the shaft is already done so they're already ready ready to go um, the hovercraft itself that I mentioned earlier that I clear coated, I'll go and grab that now. It's been outside most of the day, and we'll have a look at how that's come up. Okay, back in a sec. Okay, so here's our hovercraft deck, all um, clear coated. You can see that's come up really nice. Um, don't worry about the smudge here, that happened from that spill. Um, but that's going to be covered, so that we won't be able to see that. And the wires I just taped up while I was spraying. So it's come up really nice. Even uh, the cushion around the outside is all done. Because it has decals that have to go onto it as well. So I'll leave that. I won't touch that today, but tomorrow I'll probably look at... Um, seeing what decals I can put down just to make sure that 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 is nice and completely dry but the finish has come up really good I'm really happy with that um, not that it'll look like that permanently because we're going to do a lot of weathering on here and to dirty it up a little bit but uh, yeah not bad eh all right so I'll put this back outside and um get the uh, other side the uh, the other fan done on the other side I'll get those bits all uh, painted up and and put together all right back again sec in a second okay so those pieces are off drying that I painted and what I'm going to do now is pretty much tick off 15 that's done and uh, I'll be putting that together just as I did the last, the other piece. Now I'm going to move on to number 16, which is the actual cockpit, which includes, you can have a closer look here. Um, we've got uh, some doors, a ladder. Um, there's a glass windows. You've got to get plastic in there for the windows. Another glass piece for the back. Then we've got a floor to put in here with some seats and some little seats in there with armrests. Um, looks like some other little bits and pieces of the controls. There's a dash control panel there. Other sections of the floor. So basically, I've got to put all this together. There's some steps going up the outside, it looks like. And also in here, we need to put a light. We'll need to be putting a light in here as well. Now, what I'm also going to do is it'll continue over to the other parts to go on the outside of that as well in this step 17 and 18 
But what I'm also going to do in the background, I'm not going to do it again because I've already shown it on camera, is build another one of these up. We've already got this top section, but we've got to build the walls and do all this on step 20, which I already did. Remember that this is the piece I glued upside down, <laughs> had my dramas with. So there's a second one of them to be made. I'll do that off camera. It's just repeating what I've done before. The same goes with this piece here. We've already built this uh, previously, and this is exactly the same going on the other side of the hovercraft. So I will build that, and then we'll come back and we'll look at all of our bits of subsection bits before we have this, this where we put one side on, we put the other side on, and then a few other little touch-ups at the end. So like I said, this will be the cotton pit we're going to start working on. And that's going to be in the next video because this has been going for about an hour now and that's how long I like to keep them under the hour. So you're going to have to wait till step five. I'm not step five, part five of the video, which we'll, we'll get on and show all this. And when we come back in part five, um, I will already have those other sections put together, but not this. And we will go through the actual building of this and putting all of it together. Okay, so once again, please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give us the thumbs up and hit that notifications bell. I was um, looking at the statistics of my YouTube channel and I noticed that uh, I was saying that... Uh, 70% of my subscribers have not got that notifications bell um, clicked. Um, and what that means is that when a video is going to be released and goes up, you won't get notified of it. So if you go into the, that little bell on the side, up that and click all, like click on it and click on all, then you'll get the notification. You won't miss out. I mean, I'm sure you guys watch anyway, because I know you do, but if you want to watch it as soon as it's released and and be one of those first to comment, <laughs> yeah, hit that notifications bell. And talking about comments, please comment below. Uh, if you've got anything you want to put down there, any questions, any tips and suggestions. I want to thank everybody who helped me with the problems where I glued that piece up, upside down and... Uh, Suggested the acetone that that worked fine as you saw and we got that sorted all out I've also noticed how popular this um, uh, This model is with everybody the, um, the The percentage of views on these videos has been four times the videos of some of my most popular um, playlists so it's really good I've seen people uh, like to see um, this type of build with uh, something the out of the ordinary, a bit unusual. So um, anyway, enough talk, and uh, thank you everybody, stay well, and I'll see you all in part five. Bye for now, cheers.